Welcome to Chopstick Travel, I'm Luke Martin and today I'm in Nepal. In this episode I'm going to be showing you the Nawari culture and cuisine. So the Nawars are the original inhabitants of the Kathmandu Valley and a lot of the culture that we associate with Nepal is actually Nawari culture. So I've come just outside of Kathmandu to a little village called Kolkana and I'm come to a Nawari home. I'm going to be spending the day with a Nawari family, they're going to be cooking a ton of different dishes. We're gonna see how they're cooking it in the traditional style, tasting the food, and of course, experiencing the culture. It's gonna be a great episode, so make sure you stay tuned until the end. Let's go meet the family and see what's for lunch. Thank you. Okay, oh. All right. <laughs> okay. Oh, thank you so much. You take this? Okay. Thank you so much. Namaste. Namaste. <laughs> oh, I love the call. Namaste. Namranda, I've seen the one on the head right here, but what is, what is this one on the cheek? No, this is just uh, like they want to welcome you, and this is the warm guest. Sir. Okay, so is this Newari yeah. style on the cheek yeah. like this? Yeah. It's style. Okay, all right, cool. So let's go inside. All right, I'm looking more Newari already. <laughs> that was quite the introduction and another part of the introduction that you'll have here in Nepal is the tea which honestly seems to be pretty common across uh, the world everybody seems to greet you with tea so I love the tea here though in Nepal with milk and sometimes a little bit of like a masala in there and then they've also given me this little jaggery sweet so it's like a cane sugar oh it's really oh my god <laughs> I don't want to break my tooth Wow, <laughs> just rock solid. It's basically just hardened sugar. Mm. Gotta wash that down with tea for sure. So we're in the kitchen now and they just started a wood fire in the mud stove and the first dish we're going to be preparing is a Nawari dessert called Yomari. There's going to be two different fillings for the Yomari. One is going to be like molasses. So she's got jaggery, she just broke down the jaggery and then we're going to melt it into a molasses. And the second filling is a mix of a couple different things. One is a milk solid, there's some coconut, there is raisins, date and crushed cashews. So this is a really traditional Nawari dessert and now they're gonna make the dough, which is a rice flour dough. So using the wood fire stove, she just toasted some sesame and then ground it down into a really thin powder. And then she melted the jaggery into a molasses and then added the sesame, toasted sesame powder into the molasses. And that is gonna be the filling for the yomari. She's got this really cool knife. It's on the end of a wooden plank and it's about 70 or 80 years old, that knife. And she's using it to slice up some buffalo meat and then she just skewered it and uh, we're gonna barbecue it now. She's 
really controlling the fire with some hay, kind of just feeding it in uh, if the flame starts to get too low or pulling it out if it starts to get too high, just to make sure that the buffalo doesn't get overcooked, not too burnt or anything. And it's getting really smoky in here with this wood fire and tiny little kitchen. <laughs> So the meat has been finished grilling and they're just gonna add some spices a little bit later. But in the meantime, she just started making another rice batter. This time it's a lot thinner than the Yomari batter because this is for something called Chatamari, which is kind of like a Nawari pizza. So they're gonna fry it on the pan here next. Oh my God. Okay, now we know why people switch to using gas because <laughs> The smoke is intense, you can barely breathe in there. It is just billowing out of this kitchen, but somehow they don't seem phased by it at all. I can barely breathe trying to film this video. <laughs> So now that the filling for the yomari is complete, she just started forming the outside dough, like the wrapper, and it's a really unique shape. I don't really know how to describe it, but basically she kind of makes a point at the end and then hollows it out with her finger so that there's an area to stuff full of the molasses. And then once she finishes stuffing it, she closes it off and then kind of makes this little fish tail. So it sort of looks like a carrot or something, I guess you could say, at the end. And I just asked them why they make it in this shape and they have no idea, but they said, you have to make your Murray in this shape. So they're always this shape, but uh, that looks really unique. And then that's just gonna be steamed like that. But she's gonna make the other filling now. And apparently it's a different design for that filling. Now that all the yomari are stuffed and finished uh, being made, now they just go into the steamer on top of that wood fire. Chata Marie is almost like making a crepe or honestly like a rice paper roll for a spring roll. She just puts a very thin amount of batter down on the hot plate and then flattens it out and then she actually cracked an egg on top of it and then a little bit of salt and a little bit of cumin powder and then sort of lets it steam and fry away at the same time. So they're preparing all kinds of different dishes and we're actually gonna be having a whole tali, niwari tali, which is like a platter of dishes. And they're also gonna be preparing a couple special things. But in the meantime, they've let me try out the chatamari here. So she just made it up fresh. You can see there's an egg in the middle, a little bit of cumin on top. I'm actually just gonna go with my fingers. So the texture of that rice flour gets really crispy, and crunchy. Grab a little bit of egg there too. Mm. Mm. That's a perfect breakfast dish. It's got a nice saltiness and it's just really eggy. But the texture of the rice flour batter is really unique. It's kind of crunchy and it's kind of chewy at the same time. Mm. Yum. It's a little bit of cumin. Pretty simple, but actually very satisfying. So luckily for us, as soon as we finished eating the chatamari, the yomari, the dessert 
finished cooking. So here is the final product. You can see this one with the flat end. That's the one with the milk solid and all that different ingredients. And then this one with the kind of fishtail is the one with molasses and sesame. And then I guess this one is the mix one, but I think I'm gonna try the molasses version. You can see there was a little bit of a spillage and it looks like it's gonna be piping hot. So I'm gonna take a small bite and not to burn myself here. Whoa, look at that. That is just oozing with the sesame molasses. It's really, really sweet and slightly bitter, but it's got a nice nutty sesame flavor. The outside's almost like mochi. It kind of reminds me of mochi actually. That filling is, is intense, it's really strong. Mm, it's pretty good. It's a hearty dessert, pretty big uh, dessert. Let's go for another bite. Yeah, that filling is rich to say the least. Mm, it's pretty good though. So that barbecued buffalo meat is mixed with some green onions, some coriander, uh, tomato, and lots of spices. They call it chuela. So that's gonna be one of the dishes we have of the tali. So we we're all dying from the smoke up there. And they go, oh, why don't we just cook with the gas then? <laughs> And I was like, oh, okay, let's just go cook with the gas then. So I asked them to do it traditionally before we came here. So they thought, that, well, I did want to see wood fire, but uh, now they're just like, well, why don't we just use the gas then? So actually, this is the name of the place too. Lachi. So you can come here yourself if you'd like. It's just in a little village about 45 minutes drive outside of Kathmandu. So they're still gonna prepare a couple more dishes. So we're just going for a little walk while the women cook some more of the dishes and we're checking out this little village of Kokana. It's really an authentic Nepali village, Niwari village actually to be more specific. And you can see little ducks crossing the road and a couple of goats. And there's even a house back there that says it was the first house in Nepal to get electricity, apparently 80 years ago. You know, it's pretty hard to see the beauty in all of this. From a traveler or a backpacker's point of view, it is definitely a unique cultural experience to come to a place like uh, Nepal. But the reality is, is that the conditions are much less than ideal. Life here is really rough. And Nepalese depend a lot on tourism dollars. So, I mean, it is one way to support and it does give you a very unique cultural experience and uh, definitely changes your life view when you see something like this. So I definitely do recommend Nepal as a travel destination, beautiful uh, culture, really unique experience. And of course, if you're into trekking, I'm sure it's got some of the best in the world and the food here has been awesome. So I still recommend it and it's a good way to support the locals here. I've spent personally a lot of money on this trip just uh, buying food for the villagers and uh, paying for these uh, experiences. And uh, you know, it feels like at least that's a little bit I can do to support them and uh, promote them through these videos and promote Nepal as a travel destination. But I also wanna be honest with you guys and tell you the reality is that uh, life here is really rough. Things, things, are, things are tough. <laughs> So we just came across these women who are grinding salt. So they've got like the solid uh, chunks of salt and they're grinding it down to like a small pieces. They're using a traditional grindstone, just two um, rocks basically and then a piece of wood to spin it. Very traditional. One thing that's kind of interesting about Nepal is that there is no shortage of traditions here. No shortage of uh, authentic uh, culture. For example, some of the other countries that I visited, like I was just in Oman, uh, their culture is not disappearing, but it's definitely uh, falling into the background as the country modernizes and develops. But here in Nepal, they, they don't even have an option. I mean, they have to do things the traditional way, like you see the women weaving with the old machines. They, they don't have the new machines, so they have to use those old machines. 
Look at this, it's crazy. These streets, oh my gosh. This is like a crawl space. Oh my God. Okay, we're back from our walk and now we're in their kitchen. They're more modern kitchen this time using gas and they're cooking some pretty gnarly looking things. So let me show you what we got here. So any guesses what this might be? I'll give you a second to leave a comment down below. Just take a look at this. Wow, I can't say that looks appetizing. So that is buffalo lungs that have been stuffed. This is a Newari dish called swan puka. They fill it with a mixture of flour, egg, cumin, and salt. And why it is brown, I could not tell you. Uh, we're thinking maybe the buffalo was a smoker. So after the lungs are stuffed, they're boiled and she just sliced it up and now she's frying it, thank God. I specially requested this dish and I'm slightly regretting it. <laughs> Another Nawari dish that's extremely popular, it's called Sapumicha. It's a buffalo tripe that is filled with bone marrow. It's got a really strange look. I don't even know how to explain what that looks like. It's like a little ball with little bumpy things on the outside and apparently on the inside it's full of bone marrow. So she's frying those up now too. Do you like Sapumicha? Is it good? Yeah? All right. What did you say it looks like? The Sapumicha? Like what? Salad? Salad. Like Show me this. the picture. <laughs> snake fruit. Yeah. Or snake skin fruit, I think they call it. Snake skin fruit? Yeah. Yeah, we call it salad in Thailand. Just call it salad. Maybe it tastes like that too. I don't think so. <laughs> All the other dishes that we prepared look really good. I just, uh, I really wish I didn't uh, personally request to have those other two dishes. They're just really traditional. But uh, you know, I'm not always into the crazy, exotic, extreme stuff, so let's see. Maybe it doesn't taste too bad, but uh, oh man. My guide says she won't even try it, so. All right, appetizer has arrived. This is the final product of the swan puka, the fried lungs. Oh man, it's really soft, actually. I thought it was gonna be crispy once she finished frying it. Okay, here goes nothing. Honestly, it doesn't look that bad. <laughs> hmm. Don't judge a book by its cover, people. It's not that bad. It's got kind of like the texture of a fish cake. And it's got the flavor of pretty much all of the foods here in Nepal have a similar kind of blend of cumin and salt. It's a little crunchy on the outside. It's like juicy on the inside, which Yeah, it's got a little bit of a funk, but it's not actually too bad. This one is the Sapu Micha. It honestly looks like something out of a sci-fi movie. Like, look at that, that's super weird looking. And I was more concerned about the lungs because of the way that they looked before she cooked them. I don't know if they're fresh or whatever, but now I'm uh, a little bit worried about what this is gonna taste like because you can see how plump this thing is. It's full of bone marrow and there's a thread here so apparently what you're supposed to do is put it in and bite it off the end so let's try it oh, oh my god <laughs> that is full of bone marrow, it just explodes in your mouth. Oh my gosh. Oh good, we've got some, some real food coming out. Okay, thank you so much. Ooh, that is uh, full of flavor to say the least. Actually, I don't even know what that flavor is. I think they just put salt in it, but the bone marrow, it's so oily. It just explodes. Okay, cut. I can't eat this. Part. So thank God she's bringing me some alcohol. Okay. <laughs> right up to the top is fine, please. Yep. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> That's gonna definitely help uh, clear the flavor of that sapumicha, which 
has a little bit of a gamey flavor. Hey, you Thank you so much. Yeah, that looks great. So this is a local Niwari alcohol. It's almost like a vodka. They call it Ella. Ella. Okay, let's try it out. Served in a clay pot here. Ooh, yes, yeah. That's good. That's strong. That's gonna be over 40% for sure. Ooh, okay. Delicious. Seconds, please. <laughs> this is the Nawari platter served in the beautiful leaf plate. In the middle here, we've got the Yomari. It's on top of bara, which is a fried lentil patty and then some beaten rice on the bottom. This one's the chuela, so barbecued buffalo uh, with the green onions and lots of mustard oil. Some potatoes back here. This is sog, so spinach, some curried soybeans, achar, the pickles, some fried intestines. This is like almost like a gravy. They use the leftover meat juices and then some black soybeans here. So let's dig in. This looks amazing. All right, let me move the yomari. I'm going to try this bara, the fried lentil patty. It's also known as wo in the Nawari language. And I'm going to try some of this uh, buffalo meat that we made earlier. Something that I don't understand is why do they let it get so cold before they eat it? But let's try it anyway. <laughs> mm. Definitely don't love the fact that it's cold, like completely cold now. And I'm surprised because she really burnt the hell out of it. It actually doesn't taste very bitter and it's quite tender. It's got a nice flavor of the mustard oil and a little bit of spice too. The bara is just like a soft lentil patty. This is kind of just like a mix and match situation. Grab some of these black beans, a little bit of some sog, the spinach. Everything is cold. I don't know why they do that here, but they do. I'll try it with some of the beaten rice. Everything is meant to be eaten with your hands here. Hmm. Crunchy. The beaten rice and those black soybeans are super crunchy. I think it's the sog it has something in it. There's a really kind of fruity flavor going on there. Or maybe it's on the black soybeans, but something has a nice, fresh, fruity flavor. Mm, it's really crunchy. And a little bit kind of minty. Yeah. I don't know what that is. These uh, achar have been one of my favorite dishes here in Nepal. It just, just goes really well with everything here. Nice, fresh crunch. A little bit sour. And the beaten rice is really unique. Try it with an intestine. Mm -hmm. mm. The achar is dominated by the taste of fenugreek and then the intestine is fried to like complete crisp. The beaten rice is something I've never seen in another country before outside of Nepal. It's not completely raw but it's not cooked either. It's just like sort of cooked rice and then they pound it and it makes this like really kind of unique it's almost like cornflakes or something. It's kind of weird, but I actually kind of like the crunch. The achar are really good. <laughs> yeah, I love the achar. And we got some other alcohol here. This is the same as the other alcohol, the Ella, but this one is black Ella. They told me I have no idea why it's black, but uh, let's try it out. Oh, that one's like vinegar. That one's vinegar. <laughs> that's not even alcohol. So that's like a fermented or something. I think they make it out of rice, but uh, whoa, that one's sour. It's pretty much vinegar. I like the other one better. It's more like vodka. It's the coldness of all the dishes that I just can't get over it. I mean, the flavors are really delicious and actually the meat is really tender and everything's cooked actually really well, but the fact that they serve it completely cold just uh, kind of ruins it for me. So if I have to pick one best thing on the table, it's this. <laughs> the rice vodka. I'll have a lot of this. Well, 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 that was quite the experience. Can't say it's my favorite food that I've tried in Nepal for sure. And a little concerned about some of the foods there, but luckily that alcohol is really strong, so it'll kill anything that's gonna kill me first. And uh, that's it for today's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. It is a really beautiful culture, the Noari culture, and the ladies cooking today were so lovely, so friendly. Everybody here in Nepal has been awesome. So make sure if you haven't already, subscribe and hit the bell icon so you're notified when I post the next episode. See ya.